Using Linux is like eating ice cream. There's so many flavors to choose from. But every time when I try to install another distribution, besides going through all the installation process and doing the customization, which not only I don't mind, I also consider them as a part of the fun. But I also need to burn the USB drive, back up all my files, and restore them after the installation. These things can be quite burdensome that sometimes they discourage me from trying out another distribution. So today, I'm going to introduce you three tools that I use which almost eliminate the time and effort I needed to spend on those things. The first thing I want to introduce is called Ventway. It is a tool which will eliminate your need to burn your USB drive whenever you want to switch your system. This is their website. So in their own word, with Ventoy, you don't need to format the disk over and over. You just need to copy the ISO files to the USB drive and boot them directly. And if we go to their screenshot page, we can see it supports Windows and a lot of Linux distribution. It is also extremely easy to set up. If you go to the document, there's a Get Started page. So for Windows, all you need to do is to run the program and then click on the Install button. They also provide a graphical interface on Linux. So all we need to do is to run this command and then go to this web page. This is the Kingston 32 gigabytes USB 3.0 flash drive. I got it from Amazon last year for like 10 bucks and I've been using Ventoy on it for over a year. It has been working for me flawlessly. Let me show you how it looks like after the setup. Basically, Ventoy will create two partitions for you. One of them is 34 megabytes. I think Ventoy will create this part to handle the boot up sequence. And the other part is whatever space you have left on your USB drive. Initially, you'll have an empty partition here. And all you need to do is to copy whatever systems ISO here. And for the 32 gigabytes drive I'm using, I already have nice system, including Windows here. If I open up the property, there's still 7.6 gigabytes free. So I can put around two or three more systems here, depends on how big they are. Now, let me try to update the Ventoy version. I already downloaded their package from their website before the recording. Let me open up the terminal, copy this command. I can see the message asking me to open up this website. So my USB is already listed here. The version on my device is 1.0.32 and the package is 1.0.51. Let me click on the update and see if it works. So it says Ventoy has been successfully updated to the device. Now let's check my device. So it looks like the update process didn't erase any of my ISO files. I still have nine of them after that. Before 2015, the biggest challenge for me during the distribution hopping process is the software management. Because first of all, there are a lot of package managers that different distributions are using. For example, Debian-based Linux like Ubuntu or Mint are using APT. Arch-based Linux are using Pac-Man. And if you're using RPM-based Linux, you have to use DNF on Fedora, Yum on CentOS, Red Hat, Yas2 for SUSE. Basically, I'll have to adapt to a new set of commands every time I switch the system. And due to the different characteristic that each of the package manager has, if I want to install something outside of the distribution repository, I had to do different things. On Ubuntu, I have to subscribe to a PPA for each of the application. On Fedora, I have to enable the RPM fusion. And on Arch, I had to use either the make package command or an AUR helper tool like YAY. But that was changed during the September of 2015. A tool called Flatpak was made available. It is a new package management tool for Linux. It will offer a sandbox environment for users to run their applications. And if we go to their website, go to their setup page, it is available to set up on all these distributions. So now, after I installing a new distribution, I can simply pick the one I'm on and then set it up in minutes. There will be a link in each of these setup guides which goes to the official repository page. And here you can search the app you want. They have a large collection of applications here not only open source, there are a lot of proprietary software here as well. You can see Spotify here. You can also install Slack, Microsoft Teams, Google Zoom, Discord, Steam,
Kodi. And also, if you're a retro gamer, there are a lot of emulators available on FlatHub to install. As a developer, I always install VS Code through here. If you choose your app and scroll down the page, it will give you the installation command. And you can just simply copy it and paste it in the terminal. You can see I already have VS Code installed in my system. Finally, let's worry about the data backup and restorations. Like previous chapter, I'm going to provide a simple one-stop solutions here as well. As you can probably see, behind me there's a NAS system from Synology in which I store all of my personal backups and YouTube materials. So the solution here is really simple. All I need to do is to install Synology client in my new system and it will automatically restore all of my files. Because we already demonstrated how to use FlatHub I will be using Flatpak to install that application now. In Flathub, search for Synology. Since I already installed it in my system, I'm going to start it up to show you how it looks like. There will be an icon in your system tray. And if we go to settings, we can create another job, specify the location on the NAS, and then specify the location on your system. And after you click done, all your files will be restore on your system automatically. Now, you're probably wondering, what if I don't have a Synology drive? Is there any alternative I can use? The answer is yes. If we're going back to FlatHub and search for Dropbox, we can see there's an official application from Dropbox. And also, if we search for Google Drive, we can see there are two other applications for you to use. And that is everything for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And please let me know in the comment down below what is the number one reason that holding you back from switching to another distribution. And as always, if this video is helping you daily driving Linux, please hit the like button. And I will see you in the next one. Hi guys, this is the post-production recording. You may have noticed this is a remake of a, one of my older content. This is because recently I decided to travel back to China to visit my family and I have to stay in a hotel for 21 days before I can go home. With some major jet lag and the terrible internet connection here, I decided to remake some of my old contents instead of making new ones. And if you reached this part of the video, I'd like to thank you for all the support you gave me. I'm still learning how to make good videos week after week. And after rewatching my old contents, I can't believe that people watched them and decided to subscribe to me. So thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.